huge shout out to Ritz Car for helping me with this video. Without Ritz's help, this video would not be anywhere close to where it is. Ritz is a Gambit player that has many, many years of experience playing at the highest level. Thank you, Ritz. I appreciate it. The day is March 23rd, 2022. As of writing this video, there has been a lot of good with Destiny 2 in the expansion The Witch Queen. Things like campaign, raid, loot, challenge. It's pretty much what you'd hope an expansion to be. Just something for everyone. Something for every- I said something for everyone! Alright, fine. Let's see this. Oh, we'll worry about you later. Gambit, what, uh, what's going on here? A whole overhaul to the mode. Oh, no. There has been a whole overhaul to the mode of Gambit, where now less players recommend Gambit than ever. A community in distress. Players using weapons to one-hit kill each other. Health gates constantly popping up on the bosses. Problems across the entirety of the mode. Known communities disbanding, tournaments being shut down. So, I guess the question is, what happened? What changed? What has been happening this whole time? What hasn't been happening this whole time? Why have players come to a debate on whether this mode should be deleted from Destiny or not? Why is this once legendary mode, a huge selling point in the expansion Forsaken, taken such a nosedive to the player base? What went wrong? Ladies and gentlemen, I would like to introduce you to the rise and fall of Gambit. Some footage in this video is from players around the community. Their links will be in the description of this video, as well as the music too. To understand Gambit's original standing within the game, we need to go back to before Forsaken was even released. Destiny 2 Year 1 was the lowest point the game had ever been in. With the morale of the player base being at an all-time low, having so many players give up on the franchise they love so much, Bungie were backed up to a wall and had no other choice but to present the very best Destiny as a franchise had to offer. Bungie proceeded to fire on all cylinders, revealing Forsaken. First releasing the Forsaken Vidoc, revealing the future of the game with promises of an amount of content Destiny players had never seen before. A DLC for the players. Bungie had retaliated with a bang. If you saw the story reveal trailer for Forsaken, then you would know damn well why. This is important because this is the first time Gambit got revealed. A brand new PvE VP game mode hosted by a new shady, mysterious character called the Drifter. Gambit seemingly combined the best parts of the game, the power fantasy of PvE, the gunplay of PvP, and the mechanics plus boss slaying of endgame content. To understand the rise and fall of this mode, you must first understand how the mode functioned. Gambit worked by two teams racing to spawn in a boss and kill it first. To spawn in the boss, you had to defeat combatants in different hotspots around the map to drop moats. These moats would be banked in the middle to progress your team's score. Whenever you bank either 5, 10, or 15 moats, you spawn in a taken blocker depending on the amount of moats you banked. That blocks the other team from banking their moats. After banking a certain amount of moats, one person from your team could invade the other side, where the invader would spawn at a few select points on the map and could kill the opposing players thus dropping their moats. 
Once your team finally had 75 motes in the bank, you would spawn in a primeval boss with its taken envoys. Killing these envoys would grant you slayer stacks, which would increase the damage you dealt to the primeval boss. This would then become a race for which team could melt their boss the fastest. However, during the primeval phase, opposing teams could invade, and for each kill, the opposing team's primeval would heal. First to kill their boss wins a round, and the game was won based on a best of three. The idea of the game mode was to have something for every part of the fandom in it. Gambit was advertised as a new core component to the Destiny experience and players were more than willing to hear what this mode had to offer. A week later and players would already have their hands on Gambit by getting a chance to try it out at E3 of 2018. First impressions were overwhelmingly positive. The game mode was praised to be so much fun since it brought a strategic element players had never experienced in Destiny before. It was a more than welcome addition to the game thanks to the innovation it brought to Destiny and the chaos people so sorely missed from the previous year of PvP. However, nothing comes out perfect from the get-go, and Gambit did have a few rough patches, like how an early invade could decide a round, how especially frustrating it was to play against pre-made teams, and finally the chaos the primeval fight ensued. But overall, Gambit found huge success and was loved by the many who got to try it. Players just couldn't wait until it was live in the game. Forsaken launched and turned the tides for Destiny 2. Players were in love once more, and eyes quickly turned to Gambit. Previously, the game mode had been in a controlled environment with only a handful of loadouts being available to test out. But now the floodgates were open to have everything run wild. So what did people think of Gambit at launch? Well, Gambit gained a quick weapon meta with linears like Sleeper Simulant and the Queen Breaker's bow, dominating the playlist especially. Also back then, there was a comeback mechanic for teams that were behind, so it allowed for some ridiculous comebacks, so it was eventually adjusted. In a contained environment, Gambit functioned stupendously as the loadouts made it truly competitive. The strategy for Gambit made it so that one meta worked universally throughout games. So you had people spawn killing the invaders, invaders using linears and supers like Golden Gun, boss fakes with supers and heavy and so on. Although Sleeper and Queenbreaker's bow would be dealt with relatively quickly and many heavy weapons would rise and fall off the meta, the main issue with heavy weapons still remained. The ammo economy was also a huge problem. In addition, the Raid Last Wish introduced mods for taken enemy types, and during the boss phase in Gambit, plus the blockers, those were all taken enemy types. So the power creep of having these rare mods also quickly took over. Mods like Taken Spec for more damage, Taken Barrier to receive less damage, and mods like armaments, which allowed the player to get heavy ammo for grenade kills on taken enemies. These were very strong in Gambit. And with the other problems sprouting, Bungie would need to take action, right? Right? Well, the thing is, with the invasion strategies and boss fake strategies, they were reliant on heavy ammo, meaning that if you were unlucky with heavy ammo drop rates and the other team got their hands on ammo, then that's the round decided. Having literally half the game's modes meta be completely dependent on RNG or power creep was just frustrating. And this is where the stigma of modern day Gambit set its early roots in. The important thing to remember with Gambit is that it's not balanced separately. You have PvP, which has its metas. You have PvE, which has its metas. And Gambit just sits somewhere in the middle. So every change affected to PvE would affect Gambit. And every change affected to PvP would also affect Gambit. The best way to describe this was that it was being pulled from both sides, ready to get ripped apart. People were still hopeful as Gambit was brimming with potential to be truly great. This mode had so much loot. I mean, look at these guns and just see how many players were using it across the game, as well as an exotic quest that was really cool to chase and grind. 
there was even the most popular title in the game to search for with Dredgen. And the name Dredgen was very notorious in the game's lore at the time. So chasing that was on a lot of players' minds. To personally anecdote this, one of my old videos is even about that title hunt. With the time passing and the problems existing, Gambit, unfortunately, would begin to plunge. But in the spring of 2019, Bungie would set out to make a Gambit-related season, and thus, we entered the prime of Gambit content. Welcome to the Season of the Drifter, a season heavily focused on Gambit, introducing a brand new mode called Gambit Prime. Season of the Drifter was Bungie's attempt at making a competitive mode out of Gambit. This was a season focused on the strange character, the Drifter, and was a season where most players who weren't into the story took their break. For the remaining Gambit community though, there was new loot from the season with some fan favorites like Spare Rations and the Pinnacle Machine Gun Delirium to chase. This was essentially Bungie's attempt at a Gambit 2.0, as the original mode had not received many updates outside of the Sleeper Simulant and Queen Breaker's Bow. Only a machine gun nerf most likely targeted at the gun hammerhead. Gambit Prime came out with Reckoning, and two maps with two reworks to the older maps to fit Prime. This is how you do it if you want players to be interested in trying out the new mode. Four total maps, a new mode, armor sets with... Oh, wait, do those armor sets have set bonuses? Playstyle specific roles? What? The first and really only time set bonuses would ever happen in Destiny was in Gambit Prime and Reckoning's content loop. And this is something I think the series would benefit nicely from again if executed properly. The difference from Gambit to Prime was that there was one round in Prime with a boss that had health gates and envoys in set locations, with 100 motes to bank instead of 75. There were also changes to how many times you could invade, and there were even new blocker types added to spice things up. All of this sounds so good on paper, but how is the execution? I will say that a lot of the Gambit player pool were PvP players because of the spare rations hand cannon and everyone, and everyone, wanted to get the brand new pinnacle machine gun, the new hotness, Delirium. We covered Delirium in our Pinnacle Weapons video, but for those who don't want to watch that, or haven't watched it, or just aren't familiar with the gun, it has Killing Tally, which gives you more damage for killing enemies, and it stacks to times three. And it has the perk Overflow, so picking up any form of ammo will overfill this weapon's magazine, to have almost 200 in the magazine. Keep in mind, Rampage at the time was a 60% damage buff, with times 3 And Killing Tally, the variant of it, never made Rampage go away. The weapons in Gambit Prime and Reckoning's loop were fantastic, but the execution with the mode... was that... well... Well, can you believe me if I said Power Creep existed here big time? Power Creep in Destiny? No, no, no. Send this man to the gulags for that one. Be advised, your teammate got their ass kicked. Gambit Prime came with the glaring issue that the Invader and Reaper armor set bonuses were way too strong. Hey guys, I have a game-breaking Gambit Prime exploit for you. You want to have a sentry armor piece with a plus three on it. You might be able to do it with a plus one and two sentry gear. You want to get multi-kills until your umbral strike perk is at five stacks. Any of the mods from Last Wish could help you out with this build, especially Taken Spec for weapons and Taken Barrier and Armaments for armor. If you're using a legendary weapon, run Boss Spec or Taken Spec to melt a primeval. Taken Spec does a little more damage. In this example, I did 44.3 million damage with 9 Telesto shots on Slayer x 1 and 3 rockets on Slayer x 2. This was without Melting Point or Well of Radiance. 
some of the bonuses these armor sets gave were not only just too strong, but I think players who disliked or even liked Gambit overall enjoyed Prime more for the simple fact that they were out of the games much faster. I know it sounds harsh, but even with the mode being added, loot being added, maps and more, people were just drained of the notion of Gambit. I can't say everyone hated it, as you will find players all over that I'm sure even liked the mode. I mean, we're human after all, and not everyone is going to agree on everything. But the general population's notion had become that it was only enjoyable in a stack, and that it was only enjoyable when the chase for Delirium was on. Resetting your Gambit rank was all that was needed for Delirium. But with the two sets dominating, there wasn't ever a need for a Collector or a Sentry armor set. Just stack Reapers and Invaders. The bad news for balancing is that armaments were still prevalent, and now the meta for invading had become 1,000 voices since machine guns were nerfed. But with Scourge of the Past introduced the season before, there were now two different types of armaments and two different types of any of those mods that we mentioned with Taken. So if Fallen on the Horizon happened, then there was even more heavy ammo for those who got lucky and had armaments from the newest raid, Scourge of the Past. So even more heavy and even more power creep as a result. The focus was on balance for a little here, but with how much content the annual pass of Forsaken dropped on players, Bungie had a wide game to balance. And again, Gambit is both PvP and PvE, so balancing Gambit would mean screwing over your PvP audience and your PvE audience. It was like one of those rope torture traps to balance. Every time a nerf happened somewhere, the rope would pull further away as a result basically dooming Bungie no matter what they did or didn't do. Again, this was and always will be the biggest outlier of Gambit, and it's a shame too, as the first and only land tournament the mode would ever see was in the season of the Drifter. The Gambit Arena Cup was held on the 24th of April to the 15th of May in 2019, this was a Bungie-sponsored LAN tournament, casted by our friends of the channel, My Name is Bife and Fallout Plays. Right now, any mistake is going to cost them the tournament, and they are going to be going home, and Team Redacted oh is dear, here it comes. This should be seen as something very big, and thought to be a massive step forward for Destiny. Bungie made all of Year 1 in Destiny 2, based around PvP balance, for what I would think to be potential land tournaments. And they even did a tournament for that too, but Gambit was supposed to be the next major step. So with all of this in mind and a pretty solid turnout at the Gambit event, almost no more updates were made to the mode for the rest of the year. Actually, it only went more downhill from here, as Gambit was no longer the place players wanted to grind out their spare rations. But instead, Reckoning started to pick up. And Reckoning was not well received either, but it at least had a predictable loop for a better chance to get the roles players were looking for. In the coming seasons, Gambit Prime and Gambit would only get worse on power creep because of weapons like the exotic rocket launcher Truth, and Hive armaments now being introduced from the Season of Opulence, to only add to the amount of heavy ammo out there. If the fall of Gambit was happening, then the lack of updates to the mode and the power creep growing would send it free falling without a parachute. Oh well, maybe the years to follow would save the mode. Maybe Bungie would hear the feedback and fight back big time, back against the wall again on Gambit. The year of Shadowkeep didn't bring much to the mode of Gambit. Still no new maps, a couple ritual weapons to chase, and only worsening problems for power creep. Not only was Xenophage a huge problem, even more so than Truth because of the ammo economy and damage, but in the season of the Worthy, 
Problems only spiraled as Warmind cells were introduced and enemies just fell over in Gambit. You could nuke a whole wave of adds by just shooting an orange ball on the ground, and you could get to the primeval stage faster than ever. On top of the invasion spam that could happen, you would have games end in record times and 100 to 0 score lines on the other team, just pulling the plug and leaving. Other than that, Gambit was just left to dry out and die for the rest of the year in Shadowkeep. It wasn't until Beyond Light where the mode would get a lot of changes. Beyond Light meant sunsetting, and with that, Gambit would lose two of its most popular maps, the Dreaming City map and the Tangled Shore map. Both were nuked. Two locations very much still in the game at this point, but lost to the Architects, so you win some, you lose some. Sunsetting also meant that all of those metas that weren't exotic weapons in most of the old problematic mods were also removed. Armaments were removed from the Armor 2.0 versions introduced in Shadowkeep, but armaments still worked for a long time if you had the Forsaken armor remaining in your vault. I think very few players still held that armor, but if you did, you just could get heavy like before. Warmind cells unfortunately were still there, and were still nuking everything in their path. And with a dwindling player population for Gambit in Beyond Light, due to a lot of reasons, but mostly due to there not being any real incentive to be there, well, one very stale reason to be there I should say, there was a sort of repair in place and a silver lining that Beyond Light sunsetting created for Gambit though. Gambit would not appeal to the masses, but to a very dedicated community, Gambit was on the rise again in Beyond Light. You see, Bungie did sunset Gambit Prime, but they combined Gambit Prime's one round system while leaving regular Gambit's boss phase. So the games were over and done with very quickly. This made most people still not really care outside of their necessary leveling, but for those into this fast-paced variant, there was every reason to care. It really wasn't that bad because by the time you thought it was going to get boring, it was over. There was only a few problems that were created in Beyond Light. Eyes of Tomorrow came out and made invasion kills even easier. Curious of the Falling Star chess piece came out and killed Prime Evils in nanoseconds, with some artifact mods that made it even easier. This was known as the 4 Curious or Kick LFG meta. Unfortunately, this season would kick off a roller coaster nose diving down, with bosses becoming literal plastic on a hot road and people just thinking of Gambit as a joke even more than they already believed it to be. This was bound to happen for the mode since Bungie wants players to have fun with broken mods in PvE activities like strikes and raids. Hell, Beyond Light even balanced a lot more for PvP, but like we said before, Bungie could do almost nothing to balance Gambit separately, and because of this, broken fun in other modes just meant broken and awful in Gambit. It would only get worse in the season of the Splicer, with more mods and more broken things. But where I think it really gets bad was in Season of the Lost, with Titans being able to stack 1-2 punch throwing hammers and doing things like this. To top it off, Bungie added Gallahorn, which is Eyes of Tomorrow on steroids, and made every other invasion weapon bow down to the king. Bungie would also nerf a lot of sandbox issues in PvP, which indirectly nerfed a lot of potential builds for Gambit. This was also the time where Bungie would address a lot of feedback about moats falling through the ground, waves of enemies not progressing, and other bugs throughout the years that had never been addressed and put in a patch for it. But unfortunately, after this patch, the issues still happen regardless. At least there was an attempt, right? <laughs> well, even despite a lot of issues like we have mentioned, there was still a lot of love for this mode, 
and small community tournaments were starting to pop up again for it. It felt that if a few small sandbox changes were made, then this mode could actually be pretty decent. Stale, yes, but fairly decent nonetheless. Aside from a few cool toys to get in Gambit and the one armor set for the year, there wasn't really a reason to be here outside of trying to finish off some seasonal challenges and progress some levels. Well, in the following year, did Bungie listen to all of that feedback and make a new mode in the Witch Queen? Did they nuke Gambit completely? Or was it just stale again? <laughs> oh my god, it actually gets worse. With the arrival of the Witch Queen expansion, Gambit got a full rework. This rework was meant to change the flow of the game mode and open it up to the masses once more. Not unlike what Bungie had experimented with in Trials of Osiris the season prior. Announcing a new experimental game mode to Gambit and balancing certain aspects of the matches. We have still yet to see some of the modes Bungie wants to come out with, and there's no real date on when the Gambit Labs will premiere. Well, if this isn't perfect, Bungie is coming out with Gambit Labs, and the first week will be Invasion Swap actually this week. So try it out. Tell me what you think. On paper, a lot of these changes sounded positive and were made with the intent to stop matches from snowballing, basically having the game decided as early as the first invasion, yet only served to highlight the fundamental flaws the game mode had and also a growing issue with Destiny as well. I'm not joking when I tell you that these changes had the community so outraged that countless players and content creators even took it to Twitter and beyond to tell Bungie to just completely snap the mode out of existence. There was no small reaction from the player base, and rightfully so. The new features brought to Gambit made it so that invaders constantly had heavy ammo to spare, and prolonged the boss fight for way too long, giving too many advantages to the losing team that could really easily flip the tides of the match. Healthgating the primeval boss was also introduced again, having you run laps around the map to deal with the boss's shield. But the issue was that every time the opposing team dunked enough moats for a blocker, those blockers would suck up moats into their bank, which gave them more opportunities to invade the opposing team. The only way to deal with blockers is to kill them when they spawn in, but they spawn in the middle, and to deal with the health gates, you have to run around the map and deal with the envoys which would then make them easier to get picked off by an invader, which would then heal the prime evil to almost another full health gate. Do you see what the issue is now? To say that Gambit is a mess is an understatement. Maybe in isolation, the different mechanics and features work, but in tandem, they completely ruin the flow of the primeval fight. Having several aspects of it clash against itself and make it arguably even more frustrating to play than the old Gambit. The current state of Gambit, unfortunately, is very bad and very unfun to a lot of players. There's obviously going to be people that still enjoy it, just like you can enjoy whatever you want to. But unfortunately, to the masses, Gambit somehow got worse. To top things off, there was even some bugged exotic weapons too, like Ariana's Vow, dealing stupid amounts of damage for invaders to the point where they were flying around one-tapping everyone to the body. The point of this video was never meant to beat a dead horse, but create a more comprehensive timeline of events that highlight why Gambit is how it is. The same issues that plagued Gambit before it even came out still do in several ways today. And that's proof that this game mode fundamentally can never work. The whole concept of Gambit is to screw over the other team, meaning that for every game played, half the players will always be frustrated. Despite being advertised as a PvP-PvE hybrid game mode, the two elements run in parallel to each other. The biggest issue that Gambit will always face is that it has PvP and PvE, and balancing both of those separately 
creates only more issues for Gambit. It pulls that rope even further away. The only solution Gambit can really have is by having itself balance in a separate sandbox. But then, that would take a lot of resources away from the rest of the game. And is it even worth saving if Gambit is just a mode that not that many people are playing? It's important to really stress this, because even though Bungie was just bought by Sony, do they really want to put in the time to save a mode again that players just typically don't like anymore? The game is so ingrained and heavily reliant on weapon and ability metas, and how the sandbox looks at the time. Gambit, unfortunately, no matter what we do, will always, always suffer the brunt of issues. And that's why Gambit, at the fundamental level, just can't really work. And ladies and gentlemen, that is why the rise and fall of Gambit also happened. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. I know it's a little bit different from what I typically do. I encourage you to subscribe. We're on the path to 300k right now, and it just means a lot. I also encourage you guys to watch my Twitch streams at EvanF1997, where I'm there almost every single day. If you have any questions, comments, concerns, you can always follow me on any of my socials and just ask me there. Thank you guys so much again, and have a wonderful rest of your day. I'll see you guys later.